<laughs> Good afternoon, day of Pentecost, full gospel church. Good afternoon. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. <laughs> And a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just don't know. <laughs> uh, the things that go on off camera that just bring joy in the spirit of the saints. Amen. And God has a sense of humor. Mm hmm <laughs> I thought I was all right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, glory. Woo. This is the day that the Lord hath made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. For our opening scripture, I would like to share with you a very familiar passage of scripture. And it seems very fitting for the joy, the light of the Lord that seems to have shined off camera. <laughs> this comes from Matthew chapter 14, I mean Matthew chapter 5. I'll get it together in a minute. <laughs> Matthew chapter 5. Verse 14 through 16. I better put my glasses on so I can see. All right. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill and that cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light, let me say that part again, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Oh, I got to chill on that one. Amen. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God.
chapter 16 verses 1 through 6 the Pharisees also with the Sadducees came tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven and he answered and said unto them when it is evening Ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red 
and lowering. O oh, ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the discern discern the signs of the times? Oh. Oh. Mm. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Mm. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Mm. Mm. The next scripture I want to share with you comes from Matthew 21, verses 12 through 15. These are also the words of Jesus. Mm. And Jesus went into the temple and cast them that sold and bought in the temple, overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer. But ye have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple, saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased. Hmm. 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 My topic for this afternoon, will Jesus be meeting the church at the woodshed? Hmm. <laughs> now, like I said, this may not be one of my more popular sermons. And I thought about the scripture that said, preach the word in season and out of season. For the time will come that men will not endure sound doctrine and will heap to themselves teachers having itchy ears. Amen. Amen. Now I didn't have that down but that just came to me as I was standing here because the Lord's been dealing with me on some things. Mm. I want to look at how Jesus rebuked the scribes and the Sadducees and the Pharisees of the first century of the Christian era. What would Jesus have to say to the church era Today, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what would he have to say to us as individuals as well as the church as a whole? Now, you have heard me say before that you can't legislate morality. Morality must be modeled by our behavior and the Lord's witness in your life. Mm, amen. Mm -hmm. amen. Y'all understand where I'm coming from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I sang the first song, This Little Light of Mine. I'm going to let it shine. That the world needs to see a light in us. Yes. Yep. 
yep. not pushing it down their throats. Yep. Now, uh, if you've ever tried to feed a baby, <laughs> and you put the bottle in the baby's mouth, and the baby is through eating, and you keep the bottle in the baby's mouth to try to make the baby continue to eat, you know what happens? They spit it up. Syndrome in babies if a woman is drinking while she's pregnant. 
It has broken up a many a home. You know, some people are mean drunks and they beat up on folks. Some people get drunk and they get violent and commit murders. And so some folks got so self-righteous, we want to stop this. And so they canvassed in every state around the Union to ban alcohol. But now let me tell you what it did. Here you go. It created something that today we are still trying to get rid of. Mm -hmm. It snowballed into some things that we're still dealing with the residual effects mm -hmm. even after prohibition was repealed. Let me explain. Organized crime is the result of prohibition. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's how all of those things came about. All those different quote unquote families, they called themselves started bootlegging. Mm -hmm. People started dying because they were making alcohol in bathtubs in unsanitary conditions. Mm -hmm. They were smuggling it from the north mm -hmm. and from the south into this country. Mm -hmm. And there were illegal places opened up called speakeasies. But yet, it also created something else when prohibition was repealed. When they no longer could make money off of bootlegged alcohol, imported alcohol from Canada and Mexico and Cuba and all those other places like that, then they turned to other things. prostitution, drug trafficking, sex trafficking, which has spun off into today. There are now babies that turn up missing, teens that turn up missing. All right? And now that's created a bigger problem. All because of something that self-righteous folk were trying to do instead of letting their light shine in their lives. Yes, amen. And what happened was folks rebelled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just telling you what the Lord showed me. That's what's happened. And we're still dealing with the residual effects of that today. Now, anytime you try to shove something down somebody's throats, <laughs> they're going to rebel. Yep. Now, if you try to force feed me something, <laughs> you know, I know when I'm full when I'm eating. Don't try, don't try and force something down my throat. As much as I love ice cream when I'm done, don't try and force me to take a spoonful of ice cream because I might forget I'm saved and I might punch you in the next week. Because I ain't been saying that long. I'm just saying. That's my way of rebelling. And when I say I'm full, I'm full. When I say I don't want any more, I don't want any more. When I say I'll take the rest home when I'm out, that's what I mean. I'll eat it another day. All right? I'll let what I have soak in. You see, the problem we have in the church, we want to force feed the world and force the world to accept our standards. But here's the thing. The scripture tells us we are not citizens of this world. Our citizenship is not here. Our citizenship is in heaven. 
We are ambassadors here, and ambassadors are not citizens of the country where they are deployed. Amen. They're there on diplomatic immunity. I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. They're, at, they're there as a guest of the country. Jesus said we are in the world, but not of the world. Amen. Now, I... You know, one of the things, and I had this conversation with my sister, I had this conversation at camp meeting. And I said, you know, one of the things that I can tell folks, I have friends that are not saved. Mm -hmm. And people looked at me. Well, see, first of all, how am I going to let my light shine mm -hmm. if the only place I let my light shine mm -hmm. is in the church? <gasps> Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Say it loud for one back. Woo! Yep. Woo! Yep. Woo! Now, Jesus wasn't with the Pharisees. Jesus. No. Yeah, that's right. Jesus was with the publicans and the sinners. Yep. And he didn't go to them and say, You going to hell. Yeah. You going to hell. You ain't living right. What he did. Case in point, Zacchaeus. When they were crying Hosanna and Zacchaeus wanted to see what all this was about, he walked under the tree and said, I, I want to come to your house today. Come on down. I want to come to your house and sup with you. And he just went to Zacchaeus' house and had a conversation with him. And Zacchaeus, on his own, decided to change. Amen. Mm -hmm. Every one of the disciples he chose mm -hmm. came from lives that were less than saintly. Amen. And all he did was talk. And they decided to follow. And then they said to others, come meet the Messiah. We found him. Yep. You see, that's the way we're supposed to let our light shine. Yeah. But no, we want to take the overzealous approach and go up to folks. You going to hell? You know what? That ain't never worked with nobody. Mm -hmm. And some people you do that to, you might be picking your teeth up off the floor. Amen. Y'all know I'm right. Now I've got friends, I'm not, I'm not even going to wear, but I've got friends, and then people in this room know what I'm talking about. I've got friends that respect me because they know where I stand, and they are not, they're not believers, but they respect me. They respect somebody else in this room, and they know what we stand for. And they love us for who we are. Amen. And they listen when we talk. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's letting your light shine. Yep. And you know what? If you let a light shine long enough, somebody is going to feel the warmth of the light. Somebody is going to want what you have. How do I know this? Because it's happened! Moths to a flame. It's happened! Amen. I had a conversation with someone just this week. And they said something to me that was a sucker punch in the stomach. Mm. Your church is not my government. I said, Ooh. I said, ooh, you're right. Your church is not my government. I said, I got no argument with you there. And this was somebody that had been a victim of church hurt. Mm. Mm. Church hurt. Yeah. Church hurt. Somebody has got to be held accountable for that. Oh. Somebody 
modern day Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes. Somebody got to be held accountable for that. Amen. And I wonder, will Jesus be standing there with the spiritual razor strap or the switch off of some Holy Ghost tree? You know, there was a day some folks would make you go get the strap, go get the switch. And if you yep. didn't get the right size, they'd send you back to get half a tree. Yep. Or say, they say, you don't want me to go get it because they go get half a tree. <laughs> you know, I, I don't want Jesus to have to take me personally to the woodshed. I don't want Jesus to take our church to the woodshed. Amen. I don't want Jesus to take our denomination to the woodshed. But if you look at Revelations, oh, oh, here we go. Come on now. Here we go. John saw it on the Isle of Patmos. Yes. There's some folks. That will be in the woodshed. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was only one church. One church. That he didn't take to the woodshed in yeah. there. What does that say for us? Some of us got to get right. Get right with God. Yep. I know I'm going to lose some folks. And some folks are probably already tuned out. <laughs> but you know what? You can tune me out. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus say, line up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my dad and my mama used to have a way when they had enough. Come here. Call you by your full government name. Mm -hmm. Jack you up by one arm. Mm -hmm. And you did the little dance. And it wasn't a holy dance. <laughs> I don't want Jesus coming after me because I didn't do it like he said do it. Amen. Didn't I tell you to let your light shine? Mm -hmm. No, you were busy trying to shove it down somebody's throat. Don't do that. That's not what you're supposed to do. No. I gave you a light. Why didn't you let your light strikes because you know sometimes parents would give you that spanking and every word they were giving you a smack. <laughs> Don't do that again. Church, get right with Jesus and do it now. Let your light shine before it's too late. Stop with your gimmicks. Stop with all of the bells and whistles and start letting your light shine. Amen. There we go. Mm. There we go. Woo! Yeah. That's what we got to do. Yeah. That's what we got to do. And I'm almost done. All right, Pastor. You go. Woo! Keep going. Oh! Somebody got to get it right. Mm -hmm. Because if we don't get it right, we're going to be standing there on that day and he says, why didn't you do what I said do? And you know, I don't want to be standing there when he starts swinging that anointed conviction and you lose all your spiritual bodily functions. Hmm. Because you didn't do what he said do. Yep. I just got that vision in my mind. Mm. I want to hear him say, well done. Now, you know, the thing is, we all make mistakes. Amen. We all make mistakes. Amen. And that's why we're supposed to have short accounts before the throne. Yes. If I make a mistake, I want to run to him and say, Hey, Lord, hey, Lord, before you get the strap, let me tell you what happened. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what happened, Lord. I'm, I want to get this right. I'm sorry, Lord. I want to get it right. You know I'm a slow learner. You know, you know it takes me a while to get things. Lord, help me get it right. Lord, can you explain that 
to me again. You know I read slow. Lord, yeah. help me, because you know I, I, it takes me a while to get it. Can you explain it to me again, please, Lord? And you know in school, if you don't get something, and you ask the teacher to explain it to you again, and I had a teacher says, I don't care how many times I need to explain it to you, I will explain it to you because I want you to get it. And if you don't get it one way, I'll explain it another way. Amen. Whoa! Jesus is just that way. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now, 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 now. But there's some churches that aren't going to give up. Mm -hmm this stuff. Mm. Now, I got real scared when they started with the moral majority. I said, look, we in trouble now. When the church lays in bed with government, oh. we got a problem. You see that in the scripture. Yes. Read your Bible. Mm. And you know, I heard this now, I got two dogs, and I got one that sleeps on my bed, but I had to take precautions because I heard this phrase, you sleep with dogs, you wake up with fleas. Now, in my house, I've got, I've got, I've got the deacon, <laughs> but I got something. You see, I take precautions. Because there's a medicine that I give my dogs that makes sure that they don't get fleas and they don't get ticks. Amen. And every three months, I give them that medicine. And when they come in from outside, I comb them with a fine tooth comb. And every time I change the beds, I got a spray to back it up because I ain't waking up with nothing crawling on me. And yet, to this day, I ain't seen no fleas. So yeah, now y'all know. So somebody's like, oh, I never have no dog sleeping on my bed. That's because you don't like, you don't like dogs. You don't like pets. A friend of mine said, do you know what dog spells backwards? God. Mm-hmm. I said, God gave me that dog. It's my service dog. And I have evidence of how that dog was my service dog. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I got two of them. Mm -hmm. Now I know when I get home, one of them's going to sit on my feet. Don't you leave me again. <laughs> I know what one that is. Yeah. And they ride in the car together nice. But one of them has been traumatized because he was starved. Yes. But he rides in the car nice. And I'm working with him to get him over that trauma. Amen. You see, but the only way to do it is I have to let a light shine. Mm -hmm. And you have to do that with people. Yeah. You have to do that with the church. And if I was mean to that dog, <laughs> he'd rebel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you try to shove something down folks' throats, they will rebel. What's going on in the world now? They're rebelling. That's right. Why are they rebelling? Yeah. We're trying to force, force things. things down Amen. their throats. Amen. Just start living for Jesus. Amen. And stop Amen. trying to force Jesus. And watch how that scripture lets your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which will have. You know, and then it was a song that I sang in church growing up, lift him up. And if I, Jesus says, and if I be lifted up, I will draw, not you. Jesus says, I will draw all men yep. unto me. It's not us that does the drawing. It's not our job. It's his job. Amen. It's our job to let the light shine and he does the drawing. Yes. Oh, let's pray. I, mm, oh, hey!
Hey! I could go on with this, but I got to let it go. Mm. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, wake your people up before you have to take us to the woodshed. Wake every denomination up that's playing the gimmicks. Wake the denomination up that has the bar in the back where they serve beer and, yes. and whiskey and all and think they're doing right to draw folks in. I've seen it. I've seen it. Wake them up. Let them know it's not right. Father, wake the ones up that have other gimmicks and gadgets and stuff. Because gimmicks and gadgets don't win people to Christ. And Father, help us be lights. Because lights are what draw. And being a light is what you called us to do. And you said you would do the drawing. So let us be obedient. And Lord, I pray that every church that claims to be planted in your name starts doing just that. In Jesus' name. That is my story. And I'm not moving from it. I am sticking to it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.